Hello, welcome to another edition of Trial by Magus. Today, I'm going to be eating an elephant one bite at a time and covering the release of patch 2.0.5. See that we've got a different hangar here. We're back in the Zeppelin hangar, which means there's research and development going on. And this patch covers a massive change to the in-game equipment and consumables systems. So, let's take a look at this. For an example, I'm using one of my up-to-now very popular uh, aircraft, my Dornier DO-17Z German bomber from Tier 4. You can see here, I've been using her a lot. She's got a lot of uh, combat experience. Now let's see what's changed about her. I can see that my equipment has been stripped off. Previously, I had uh, engine tuning, the rear gun stabilizer, and a bomb sight mounted on her for optimal high altitude bombing performance. My consumable lineup previously was an engine restarter, the uh, crew single use med pack, and uh, the manual fire extinguisher. Well, I can only mount one piece of equipment on her. Let's see what it is. Okay, I've got one open slot here, which apparently can only be used for the engine. So, let's see what's available. Armor protection, which would armor up my engines and uh, prevent engine damage, which is quite common in the game post 2.0. Seems that the engines get knocked out even from small, uh, small arms fire. So I could armor up those engines, reduce the chances of that happening, but in exchange, my Schnell bomber would lose aircraft speed. Well, that doesn't seem like a good trade-off at all. Especially considering that the piece of equipment that accomplished this change before, uh, that being extra armor plating, did not reduce your aircraft speed, and also did not appreciably decrease the amount of damage that my engines were receiving in battle. Okay, so that piece of equipment uh, is not something I'm going to use. Let's take a look at the next one. Lightweight power unit. Increase aircraft maneuverability. <laughs> it's a bomber, so I'm definitely not going to be doing that. But it increases the engine's resistance to damage. No, not increases, it reduces it. Well, that would be something that you would put on a fighter, except you definitely don't want to take engine damage in a fighter, so I guess that's not a good idea either. Ah, here we go. This must be the, uh, the replacement for my engine tuning. Operated engine. Increases engine thrust. But it reduces resistance to fire which in a high-hit-point aircraft is definitely not something you want to have happen, catching on fire more often than you already do. So it seems that every piece of equipment you can put on here will increase one aspect of the aircraft, but it negates the bonus by giving you a crippling negative, no matter what you put on. That's an interesting design choice. Now, let's see here. I've got locked consumables and an open consumable slot. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I've still got these sparklers, smoke flares, and fireworks that were useless because they always took up a consumable slot. I never used them because why would you take out something that actually has a combat use to put in something that is purely visual and fun to use? I don't know. <laughs> the answer to that is you don't, so yeah, my depot is full of these consumables that will never be used because there is not a slot that is usable for you know, visual and fun items only. So, from my lineup of three consumables that I had before, 
I can now choose to mount one. Well, that's terrible. Now I've got an extra slot here for ammunition. Now this looks kind of interesting. Heavy warhead, maximum damage caused by bombs and rockets, increased radius of blast damage. Right, okay, but you can only purchase it with gold. <laughs> yeah, that's no good. Improved explosives. Yeah, maximum radius of blast damage. I guess that's an increase. Not really clear on the tooltip what that means there. Increased damage caused by bombs and rockets. Also purchased only with gold. Uh, yeah. Improved fragmentation. Increased damage caused by bombs and rockets. Okay, finally. A silver uh, uh, credit purchasable option, but it doesn't increase the amount of the blast radius. So, if you want to be effective in your bomber with your bombs, guess what? you got to spend gold for it. If you've got very large radius uh, bombs, like the higher tier German bombers, you could get away with using the improved fragmentation only, but for all the low-tier uh, bombers that use uh, small 50-kilogram bombs dropped in clusters. Guess what? You're spending gold. Let's see, what are the options for these other ones? Let's see. Oh, I can't improve my turrets until I get a specialist classification on my aircraft. Okay, well, let's see what, uh, what I have to do to get specialist. All right, here we are. Specialist. Uh, capture points earned in victorious battles. 7,000. And, oh, and there's another requirement here. Aerial targets destroyed by a gunner. 10. So, with my previously fully upgraded aircraft... I now have to play it all over again in a weakened and very nerfed state up to a point of 7,000 capture points and 10 aircraft shot down by a German bomber that has no fixed forward firing guns to engage enemy aircraft and only weak 7.92 millimeter machine guns uh, in defensive emplacements all around. And I can tell you, without having access to that rear gun stabilizer, the range on these guns is so short that anything that you can hit is going to be shooting back at you and doing much more damage. So you have to manage to shoot down 10 aircraft with this thing, plus do uh, 7,000 capture points, all in victorious battles only, in order for the privilege of getting back the equipment slots you previously had for free. Now call me cynical, but I think that this is a far inferior setup to what we had before. And I know what the Wargaming developers are going to say. Oh, but this gives you a reason to go back and, and play these planes all over again. Well, I've got news for you. I was going back and playing these planes still because I found them fun to play. The conditions you are now giving me and forcing me to play this plane with are not fun. This thing is no longer performing at the capacity that it had prior to this patch. And... I don't know. It's like it's like it's like a time sink has been put into the game that you would find in, you know, your standard uh, Korean style MMORPG, where you're just forced to play and grind away to get a a modicum of improvement over what you had 
you know, 200 play hours beforehand. And I gotta tell you, that that's not why I play wargaming games. I played them because they were fun, and there was a definite linear progression to how the improvement worked. You know, you play the plane, you get the XP, you improve the plane's equipment, you, know, you research the plane's equipment, mount that equipment, and then you have your optional equipment, which every plane had an optimal setup depending upon what role you were taking that aircraft in for. You know, fighters, you build a better fighter. You go for higher speed, higher uh, accuracy of your guns, uh, better engine, or you build for maneuverability. Bombers, you could go for a high altitude, uh, uh, fast bomber build, or you could build for a uh, low altitude uh, uh, raider. And now, well, you can't do that because everyone's only got this, this, this one slot here for your consumables, one slot for uh, modified armament, and you get one equipment slot that you are forced to work with until you somehow get specialist unlocked. At least, at least Wargaming hasn't put in, you know, a pay pass where you can give Wargaming money in order to, oh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, I guess they did do that. So, I guess the biggest point of this, uh, this patch here and this change to the equipment setup was uh, not to increase the fun of the game, but to make it so that you would either have to grind out an insane number of battles in order to achieve specialist status on your formerly favorite aircraft, or give Wargaming money so you could get back the function that you had before. That seems pretty straightforward. Now let's get onto the specialist thing a little bit more. This is only for a... Remember, that 7,000 capture points and 10 aircraft kills with nerfed gunners is a requirement for a uh, Tier 4 aircraft. Let's see what the requirements are for... Well, let's go for my uh, Tier 6 German bomber, the DO-217M, and see what her requirements are. Oh! I see that I'm given a few more open slots here on a higher tier aircraft. Uh, what can I do with my turrets here? Uh, turret armor protection. Uh, resistance to injuries is increased on your gunner crewman, but it decreases your aircraft speed. On a fast bomber, not something you want to do. Uh, turret gun laying drive. Aiming speed in automatic mode. Oh, well, okay, yeah, definitely not going to take that because you want to get that skill uh, uh, on the gunner. Uh, turret gun sight. Uh, range of fire in manual mode only. Okay, well, that's terrible. And for some reason, putting a gun sight on there makes your gunner more susceptible to injury. Well, that's just extremely arbitrary. One has absolutely nothing to do with the other. I, mean, I could see how having extra equipment for moving the gun quicker or, you know, with hydraulics or just slapping armor into the gunner position would decrease speed and maneuverability, but having an improved gun sight to increase the range of the gun makes it easier for your gunner to hit. What is he, standing outside of the plane and just aiming the gun by himself? It, that makes no sense at all. That is, that is awful. Okay, and I can't even look at this because it's still locked. Yeah, okay, well, let's get back to what I came up here for before I got off-tracked by how horrible the options were for my turrets. Let's see what specialist requirements are for the Dornier. Okay, I've got elite status. What does it take to get specialist? Oh, 10,000 capture points and 15 aerial targets. Wow. 
Wow. Oh, oh, I could throw 60 tokens at it and uh, get it for little or no time expenditure. But again, that is throwing money at Wargaming to say, please, please make the pain go away. And that's, that's not good game design. All right. So there's the low tier and the mid tier reviewed. Let's take a look at what's been done to the high tiers. Okay, well, let's take a look at my 1102B German ground attack aircraft. An aircraft I really do enjoy flying. Let's see, three equipment slots available on her. For the cockpit, we've got cockpit armor, Increase resistance to injuries, you know, that's, that makes sense. Decrease aircraft maneuverability, that makes sense. Gun sight, increase firing accuracy. And again, pilot's resistance to injuries decreased because you've got a better gun sight. That just, no, that makes, that is not logical. It makes no sense. It just seems to me that the balancing across these new pieces of equipment is just extremely arbitrary and it's just illogical. Okay, reinforce skin. Wings and tails resistance to damage. Decreases your speed. Yeah, reinforced air airframe. Increase your HP at a cost of maneuverability. Lightweight ring frame. Increase your maneuverability but subtracts aircraft hit points. And uh, polish skin, increase speed, decrease maneuverability. Okay, the speed increase and the maneuverability decrease on the polished skin, that makes, that makes sense. The reinforced airframe, that, that makes sense. Reinforced skin, uh, it, it makes sense, but the, the, the fact that it makes sense does not mean that it is a good change. Because a lot of this stuff, these, these aircraft, the German uh, attack aircraft here in particular relied on their high speed and greater maneuverability in order to perform their role because they don't carry all the bombs and rockets that the the Russian attack aircraft do. So they had to be better at air-to-air -air combat. And I don't know, even at, even at tier 10 here, this doesn't seem like I've got a, a, lot, of, a lot of really good choices here. Uh, I can't even... I can't even mount anything for my my defensive turrets on the uh, on the 1102B Drake here. It's I, I've got defensive guns on it. I had improved gun performance on it before this patch, but I, I don't even have the option now. So 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 much for greater customization. I've got an entire aspect of this aircraft that I cannot improve at all here. Okay, these are the same options as the ones we saw in the bomber. Uh, engine, we saw that already. Forward firing weapon. So, yeah, sure. Let's just see what we got here. Uh, increased rate of fire. Okay, that's interesting. So it increases your damage, but it decreases your damage by killing your firing accuracy. Uh, long gun barrels. Uh, increases your range of fire, but increases the rate at which your guns overheat and reinforced bolt carriers increased burst length but it decreases your accuracy okay yeah I don't see I don't see anything here that is an obvious good choice because of these negatives And then there's this whole aspect of this patch where you can increase the bonuses provided by your equipment by doing research on them and improving the equipment. It's another grindy aspect where you're playing the game to get uh, salvage materials from, a, from the battle before. But you only get salvage materials depending on what you do in that battle if you win. And even then, when you stockpile up the uh, materials 
gathered from victorious battles, it's still completely RNG as to what is going to happen when you go to improve your equipment. Uh, you, you might decrease the negative. You might increase the bonus. You don't know until it happens. There, there is no set uh, standard for what you do in order to improve stuff. Everything is left to chance, which means you have to spend more time gathering more materials and make another attempt if the last research and improvement attempt didn't get you what you wanted. Uh, it just... I'm... I'm without words. I, I, I want to... I want to come up with something good about this patch. Uh, the... The UI improvements are, are nice. I mean, that these icons, these are very pretty. Those those look nice. Uh, they're definitely better than what we had before. But as far as the actual mechanics of the changes that uh, that have been put into the game, I I just can't see how it's an improvement. It, it's not an improvement. It, it's just something that's been put into the game to make you play it more. And, well, here's, here's the trick to that. You can't force somebody to play if they're not having fun. So really what the, what the focus needs to go, f uh, go to here is shift away from changing the game just for the sake of change in the hopes that you can import a system that will make people play the game more you should draw people to the game by having a fun game. And honestly, I found uh, Warplanes before 2.0 fun. I found Warplanes after 2.0 fun. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm still playing. But this patch right here, to me, just strikes me as, as, a, as a challenge. This is a challenge to, oh, you've... You've put up with everything else up to this point, and you're still playing. How about this? Can you do this and continue to play? Is really the feeling I'm getting off of this. Because I, I look at I look at what I've done in the past, what I've built up to, and now I'm looking up at another mountain to climb here, and I'm not feeling strongly motivated to climb that mountain. Because what if I what if I climb that mountain and then suddenly things change all over again? Then all that time is wasted. <laughs> the most hilarious part about this is that this is a change that, to my knowledge, absolutely nobody has been requesting. Uh, the forums were never full of, oh, you know what, this game could use a complete overhaul of our equipment and consumable system because we're tired of it working exactly the same as it does in World of Tanks and World of Warships, where you get your equipment, you mount it on, and it does something that is static and very measurable. And now Warplanes has uh, stepped away from that standard and the most hilarious part about it is that we get this big of a change, but we still can't get our three-man battle groups back yet, like the other two play, uh, games have. Uh, that's it for today's episode of Trial by Magis, reviewing the new equipment and consumable system. I wish I had uh, better news for it than this, but... Uh, I've got to be honest in my evaluation of it, and my evaluation of this patch is that it really needs to go back to the designing board and redone. Uh, I, could, I could definitely see us having more options for equipment to mount, but definitely these negatives, these negatives have to be removed. This, uh, this specialist status has to be removed. And yeah. This is, yeah. Get rid of the specialist status. Get rid of the negatives on the equipment. Give us more options for equipment to mount, sure. 
people would be very happy with that. And I would have been happy to uh, to try out and rebalance things uh, with new options, as opposed to the old uh, the old mainstays that we had going into this patch. But yeah, this this needs to be seriously reworked because the forums, the social media, no one was requesting this. But now the forums and the social media are full of players, both new and old, saying, did anyone get the license plate of that truck that just ran over us? That's it for today. Good hunting.